Thank you for joining this session. Today, we're going to talk about democratizing self-service data preparation within Power BI, Power Apps, and Power Automate using Power Query data flows. My name is Miguel Jopis, and I'm a program manager working on the Power Query AM and data flows team at Microsoft. I have the pleasure to be joined for today's session by my colleague, Ben Zach. Hey, Ben, how's it going? Hi, Miguel. Thank you. All good. We're going to structure the session in three main blocks. First, we will talk about why do we need data preparation. Then we will provide an overview, deep dive, and a bunch of demos about Power Query and data flows. And finally, we will give you a sneak preview of what's coming next to the product. First, why do we need data preparation? If you think about the challenges with data preparation in today's world, to start with, it's really hard to find and connect data to connect to. The experiences for data connectivity are fragmented. Different products provide different data connectivity experiences. Different data source backend have different types of connecting and querying data. Data very often, and I would say always, needs to be reshaped before it can be consumed. Not only because data may be dirty and not have the right quality, which in many cases it's what happens, but even when data is uh, of good quality, it may very rarely be in the exact shape needed for the analysis or the downstream activities that you're trying to derive from it. The shaping needed to do on the data, it's very often a one-off and not very easily repeatable. And if all of this was not enough um, when working with a single data source, Consider also the complexity of having to combine data from multiple data sources, having to deal with different uh, keys in different systems and having to aggregate that data and join it across different sources. It becomes an even harder challenge than all of the above. Last but not least is the three Bs of big, of big data. When we think about big data, we generally think about the volume of data, but that's not the only challenge that comes with it. There's also uh, challenges associated with the variety of data sources or data shapes that we have to connect to and deal with. And there's also very, uh, you know, challenging considerations to be made around the velocity or the rate of change of that data. There are certain data sources that only change once a quarter or once a month, things like financial results, sales numbers. But on the other extreme, there are sources of data that change multiple times per hour or even per minute. For a user to have to take into account all of these challenges in order to derive value from data, it becomes a really hard, challenging and time consuming task. To that extent, here is a quote from Gartner st uh, stating that analysts spend up to 80% of their time on data preparation before they can even analyze and make decisions off of that data. Another quote from Harnard Business Review um, states that three quarters of the companies are not able to act on the majority of the data that they collect due in the majority part to disjoint systems and data integration issues. Gartner also predicts that by the end of 2020, there will be a larger amount of data produced by citizen data scientists than the one actually produced by professional data scientists. What it means for us is that not only we need to make all of these um, activities possible, we also need to simplify them and democratize them so that even lower skilled users are able to achieve their goals. With all of that in mind, how does Power Query help? To start with, Power Query provides connectivity to hundreds of data sources, and that includes data of all sizes and shapes. The experience to connect and transform data is very highly interactive and intuitive, very easy to use, point and click at data um, on a preview and apply operations uh, over it to transform it, regardless of the data source and regardless of the data size. The experience that Power Query provides is consistent across all of these hundreds of data sources, as it provides the same set of data transformations, no matter what data source you're connecting to. It's also very easy to combine data across different data sources using Power Query by using operations such as merge or append and many others. Power Query provides this unified set of data connectivity and preparation experiences across a, a wide variety of Microsoft products, including Excel, Power BI, analysis services, data flows, and many more. Let's take a closer look at Power Query and data flows. 
Power Query is available as a desktop and a web component. We will start talking about the desktop experiences, which are integrated within Power BI, Excel, and analysis services. The mashup engine is the underlying query runtime behind Power Query, and uh, it provides over 140 out of the box data sources, and these are extensible. It also provides over 300 different types of data transformations, things like pivoting and pivoting of data, splitting columns, lots and lots of filter options, and many more. It allows to easily combine data, as I was saying earlier, using operations like merge and append, and it provides the consistent capability across all data sources. Whenever possible, Power Query will try to push down or fold the execution of queries to the underlying data source backend, let's say something like SQL Server. Whenever that's not available, let's say when connecting to a CSV file or connecting to a, a web page to actually scrape HTML data from it, Power Query will compensate and it will run those queries locally through the mashup engine. As you can see, the experience is very code free and visual, which makes it very engaging for end users. Here is a deeper look at connectors. Power Query provides over 140 data connectors out of the box, and that includes a large set of connectors built by our team at Microsoft, which are bundled with Power Query, as well as connectors built by other ISVs in the industry uh, using our Power Query Connectors SDK. These connectors can also be certified by Microsoft and bundled within Power Query. In fact, when you look at the get data experiences inside Power Query, you'd see all of these 140 connectors without even realizing that some of them are built by Microsoft, some of them are built by others in the industry. In addition, anyone else could also build their own connectors using the Power Query Connectors SDK, and we see thousands and thousands of connectors active that are, you know, sideloaded by users and admins into their Power Query and on-premises data gateway experiences. Let's take a look at Power Query Online. Power Query Online has very similar capabilities to Power Query Desktop. It's just available as a web-based uh, self-service data preparation experience. It supports all the same 300 plus data transformations as desktop Power Query version. It has the same underlying M engine. It currently provides about 50 connectors, including cloud and on-premises data sources by using the on-premises data gateway. And it's integrated within data flows in Power BI, Power Apps, Dynamics 365 Customer Insights, the Power Apps Admin Portal Experiences for Data Integration, the Power Automate uh, through the uh, SQL Server Connector, and Azure Data Factory with a new capability called Wrangling Data Flows. Let's now take a closer look into data flows. Ben, can you walk us through what data flows are? Thanks, Miguel. So let's review what data flows are. Data flows are a self-service, cloud-based data preparation technology. Data flows allow customers to ingest, transform, and load data into either the common data service, Power BI workspaces, or even your organization's Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account. Data flows run in the cloud. They can be configured to run on demand or on a schedule. Data flow customers author data flow using Power Query Online, which Miguel just reviewed uh, for us. So let's take a look at the steps that are required to author a data flow. So the process starts by uh, the application that hosts a data flow. And today, data flows are available in Power BI, Power Apps, or Customer Insights applications. The first step is to indicate which data source you want to get data from. And as Miguel mentioned, there's hundreds of cloud and on-premise data sources, and the list is uh, constantly growing. After you select the connector and authenticate to it, you can transform and reshape the data using the Power Query Online experience. Um, there's, as Miguel mentioned, 300 plus transformations. Customers can write uh, their own custom mashup code to perform their own transformations. The options are limitless. Once you are done shaping the data, there are a few other configuration steps, like how frequently it would refresh. Um, and uh, sometimes if you load the common data service, you, you have an experience to map the entities in the data flow to common data service entities. You can also save data flows to Power BI workspaces, or as I mentioned to uh, your own organization's Azure Lake, uh, Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account, and that other services can consume the data. 
So one, one thing that's cool about analytical data flows is that they're composable. So data flows is a pipeline that loads data into a destination data source, but then you can actually create other data flows that can load data from these data flows. So if I'm in any one of the experiences that data flows available in, I can leverage instead of the hundreds of connectors and on-premise data sources that are available, I can choose the Power Platform data flow connector. And then what I'll see are entities that other data flows have created. I can continue on modeling them. These are called computed entities. And once uh, I've finished transforming the entities, I can load them into the same destinations that I mentioned before. One thing that's interesting with data flows that are composable is that when one data flow completes its refresh process, if you've composed another data flow on top of it within the same environment or workspace, that will trigger the downstream data flow to refresh as well. And in that sense, you can build complex data pipelines that actually stay in sync and refresh together. Where can data flow outputs be consumed from? So when data is loaded to Common Data Service, Power BI Storage, or Azure Data Lake Gen 2, you have a few options. In the case of common data service data flows, you can consume the data from the data flows in uh, all four of these experiences using the common data service connector. You can also consume the data from the Power Platform data flow connector if it was stored in a data lake, whether your organizations or a data lake within any one of these three products that is, uh, any one of these two products that are, is provided uh, to you by default. In addition, if you load data to your own organization's data lake, we store data flow data in what is called CDM folders, which is a standard that Microsoft uh, has uh, developed in order to allow services to interop with each other on top of the lake without actually having to integrate service to service. What that means is once a data flow deposits the data in the lake, you can uh, obtain the data schema and the data from within the CDM folder using libraries or Azure services to consume the data. And then you can build data flows that basically uh, enable collaboration between all of the services that you see above and below here via the lake and the CDM folder standard. So what are common use cases for data flows? Data migration or ingestion into common data service entities. So a lot of times customers would like to sync data into the common data service and build power apps and flows on top of it. Uh, another one is uh, lift and shift to the cloud. Whether you have on-premise data sources that you want to make available in the cloud, uh, in uh, Power Apps or in Power BI, you can leverage data flow with an on-premise data gateway to load data into the cloud and then Microsoft Cloud Services can consume the data very efficiently from that point on using the data flow connector or again, the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. Another application is business intelligence in Power BI. You can build reports, dashboards, and data sets on top of data flows and share those uh, dashboards and reports with people in your organization. You can also ingest data with data flows for use in Insight application. For example, Customer Insights leverages data flow to ingest data from multiple data sources in order to provide customers a unified profile of their customer across all these uh, data sources. Finally, AI Builder scenarios can be powered by data flows. AI Builder is a functionality within the Power Apps Maker portal that leverages data in common data service. And so the first step is leveraging a data flow to bring data into the common data service and then using AI Builder to consume it. With that, I'd like to switch uh, gears and uh, move to a demo. We'll kind of take you through creating standard and analytical data flows and then how the outputs can be consumed from Power BI. Okay, so we'll start by creating an analytical data flow. What I want to do is uh, get data from a few data sources. I work at a international company and I would like to organize my order data with customer data and the employees that uh, submitted the order. Now I have orders from uh, Europe and rest of world and they're in two databases. So you saw me getting data from SQL DW and then my second order table is uh, from a CSV file. So now I have all my entities here so I can start uh, transforming. And as you can see, the orders table has uh, the customer ID and employee ID, but not the metadata for those uh, customers or employees. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna 
append the rest of world orders and the European orders. So I'm going to append queries and I'm going to choose the first table to append and then the second table. And that's going to create a new entity. Uh, it's first called append. I'm going to rename it. Uh, this is going to be the entity that has all orders. So now I have uh, the orders, but I don't have the customer information or the employee information in this table, but I do have them in other tables. So what I'm going to do now is join uh, these tables. So let's uh, join one table at a time. We'll start with uh, a customer ID. I'm going to choose the customer table and then the column that I should join on. And there's a few join options. Uh, left outer, I'm trying to join everything from the first table. Uh, that matches everything from the second table. This is going to add a new column for me, and that column is going to be the second table. But I would like to see the data in this table, so I'm expanding the column. And in this case, uh, company name, contact name, uh, they're pretty self-explanatory, so I am going to uncheck use original column names as prefix. So I'm just going to see those names, and now they're going to be expanded into the table. So you can see uh, they were added, and uh, now I'd like to see the employees that uh, uh, submitted the order. So I'm going to join that with the employee table. I did notice that uh, the employee format was uh, text and numbers, but uh, it should be a number. So I transformed it to a number really quick. And now I'm going to join again from the order table with the employee table, and again left outer. And again, I'm going to have to expand uh, the columns. But over here, last name, first name, they don't make uh, enough sense. So I kept the prefix. And now you'll see employee name um, and then the first name, last name. Next, um, I'm done uh, transforming my data. Now I need to decide how frequently it's going to refresh. I like to refresh every day at 2 AM to let the data settle. And then I selected the option to receive an email notification if the data flow fails. Now I want to load the entities to common data service and also demonstrate that uh, I can get data from the data flow I just created. So you can chain data flows and the first data flow is an analytical data flow. They're perfect for transformations. Um, and the second data flow is just loading it to common data service so I can use it in uh, a power application or power automate. Uh, this screen is the mapping screen, so this is a specific to common data service entities. It's normally a good idea to define a key field. I'm creating a new entity, so I can define the key field here. It's currently uh, saying that a key field cannot be multi-line text, so I just need to change it to text. Uh, multi-line text was the default. Uh, and uh, using a key allows me to make sure that every time I refresh the data flow, it's not going to... Uh, create new entities uh, if those entities already exist. So it's just going to update them. So now I have two data flows. Uh, one uses data from the other. And uh, next, I'm going to show you uh, how I can, uh, using the same experience in Power BI Desktop, get data from this data flow. So I'm going to quickly switch to Power BI. I'm going to hit Get Data and the Power Platform Data Flow Connector. And the Power Platform Data Flow Connector can show me data flows created in Power Apps environments or in Power BI workspaces. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we're going to go get data from the same data flow I created. So I'm showing you how it's possible to ingest and transform once and then reuse the data very easily with data flows. And then Power BI Desktop also uses Power Query. Same uh, experience, same look and feel. Uh, but for a different use case. So that's the first demo, and I'm going to switch back uh, now to the presentation. All right, so now let's switch to roadmap update and to you, Miguel. For the last part of this session, we're going to give you an update on our roadmap for Power Query and data flows. Let's just start with connectors. As you probably noticed, over the last few months, we've released many, many new connectors inside Power Query Online, including things like Google BigQuery, Amazon Redshift, Spark, Impala, ODBC, Azure Data Lake Storage, Gen2, and many more. We're currently working towards uh, 
providing a capability to do a one-time upload file support for file connectors within Power Query Online to remove friction from having to install an on-premises data gateway for simple scenarios. We're also working on a Parquet files connector. You may have noticed it's already available in some of the demos you saw from Ben, and it shows up inside data flows in Power Apps. We're working towards rolling out that same connector inside Power BI data flows as well as eventually Power BI desktop. We also very recently shipped connectors for SAP HANA and SAP Business Warehouse and are working towards enabling other multidimensional or cube connectors such as analysis services on-prem and in Azure, Adobe Analytics and Google Analytics. On the desktop front, a few months ago, we launched a new connector for Hive LLAP that's currently in public preview. And we are working towards releasing tech CSV by example capabilities as well as automatic table detection from Excel and JSON files. On the transforms and query editor front, we have released many new transformations within Power Query Online, including things like combined files experiences, fill up and down values, replacing errors, custom column user experiences, including M intelligence support, and a bunch of others. Um, we are working towards releasing fuzzy grouping and clustering of value capabilities in a text column and it's one of the demos that i plan to show you in a couple of minutes additionally we've released data profiling capabilities to better understand column quality value distribution and detailed column profiles within your data in power query online m intelligence support within the formula bar and the advanced editor the ribbon as you saw on some of the demos for ease of discoverability of the 300 and uh, more transformations available in power query we're also very soon going to enable copy paste of queries between power query desktop and power query online being able to just right click on a query in the queries pane uh, and copy it and then go to a different power query integration let's say you start from excel and then you paste uh, something uh, a query uh, within power apps uh, that will be possible soon, much like today, it's possible for you to do that between Power Query desktop uh, integrations. We also recently enabled the query parameters user experiences, including the ability to create, bind and edit parameters and also to create functions uh, that turn those parameters into input parameters to the function. Last but not least, we're working very hard towards enabling better query diagnostics within Power Query Online. If you're familiar with query diagnostics inside Power Query Desktop, these capabilities will uh, extend those within Power Query Online, including things like folding indicators, query plans, and the ability to view the underlying data source queries for every and each step within your queries. Let me actually show you a couple of demos. The first feature that I want to show you is text by example in Power Query Desktop. This feature allows users to extract data from semi-structured text or CSV files, like in this sample file that I'm showing you, which contains repeating information from customers throughout the file. By going into the by example experience, customers can easily provide those sample values that they would like to extract. As you can see, the by example experience helps users by providing suggestions of the values uh, based on what they type. Once enough sample values have been specified, Power Query will figure out the magic steps to make happen. Users can then continue providing other sample values for fields that they would like to extract based on the same repetition pattern, like in this case, specifying a contact title or a phone number. After by example, users can actually land the output into the Power Query editor. And here you can actually see that the sequence of steps that Power Query identified were needed in order to perform this data extraction can be reviewed or adjusted from the steps pane. The second feature that I'm going to show you is fuzzy grouping within Power Query Online, which allows the duplication and normalization of values like the ones captured in this table with uh, employee names. You may be familiar with the merge queries capabilities available in Power Query that included fuzzy matching logic in the past. This would allow users to combine data across different data sources using fuzzy logic, but it was not clearly uh, obvious to users how they would be able to leverage these capabilities from the group by column experiences. Classically, you would apply a group by operation to, for example, add up all of the total hours spent by week 
uh, by each of the employees in this table. And you would end up with repeated values with Bill, Billy, Will, as well as multiple variations of Miguel with typos and uppercase, lowercase differences. With the new fuzzy grouping capabilities in Group I, users are able to leverage the same fuzzy logic that they have available to them within the merge queries experience in order to get uh, normalized values, such as in this case, Bill and Miguel. However, notice how there's still a difference between Bill and William, which conceptually are the same values, but they're not that close for the fuzzy logic algorithm to figure out that they need to be combined. For that purpose, a synonyms table can be used as the input to the uh, group by uh, configuration as a transformation table that will make the two values be considered the same and uh, ultimately end up having Bill and Miguel as the two reconciled values. Fuzzy grouping will ship in Power Query Online in the next few weeks and it will accrue value to all of the product integrations where Power Query Online and data flows are available. Thanks, Miguel. Awesome demos. So switching gears to data flow roadmap updates. So the features in front of you are either in progress or coming soon. So let's uh, quickly go over them. Enhanced compute will allow data flow customers to leverage Azure Synapse compute to increase the performance of analytical data flows. These are data flows that are stored in the lake. We're also uh, making improvements to our backend to have a consistent uh, experience for data flow refresh that's uh, similar across Power BI, Power Apps, Customer Insight data flows. In addition, we're releasing a data flow power automate connector, which will allow you to create flows that trigger when a data flow refresh completes, you'll be able to see the data flow refresh status and then also take action uh, like refreshing other data flows. So this will allow you to kind of combine data flows across Power BI, Power Apps, and with other services that once data completes refresh, you can actually go and take action in a different service. In the area of deeper integration with CDS, there's a lot of great things coming. So CDS performance improvements, we're improving load speeds, uh, increasing the load limits, and also uh, reacting to CDS uh, throttling events. All these changes will amount to higher speed and higher reliability for data flows that load data into CDS. In addition, uh, now you can create analytical data flows without having to connect your Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 to the environment. So by default, you'll have a data lake provided by Common Data Service that you can create analytical data flows um, and, and then use the data there in all the services that support data flows or the data flow connection. Solution awareness is an application lifecycle concept in Power Apps. It will allow you to package data flows with other artifacts in the environment and deploy them uh, between dev, test, and production environments or package them to uh, share with other people. CDS entity mapping, we're making a few changes to the uh, map entities experience, uh, smart defaults to allow you to just click next if you don't have any special configuration, and then auto-generated primary keys to simplify mapping to entities that have keys, uh, and then uh, single and multi-line uh, fields based on data profiling will auto-detect those. Finally, incremental refresh for data flows that load data into CDS. This is a feature that is already available for analytical data flows, but now you'll be able to configure a data flow to just grab the latest increment of data as opposed to reloading all the data at once. This will improve the overall performance of data flows and reduce the load on CDS. And with that, I'd like to demo uh, the Power Auto Automate connector in action. So for this next demo, I'm just gonna walk you through really, really quickly uh, how to use Power Automate with the, the data flows we just created. So a Power Automate connector is coming soon for data flows. I can initiate a flow when a data flow refresh completes. I just need to select the workspace or environment it was created in. And then I can also trigger a refresh of a downstream uh, data flow. So the second data flow I created. But uh, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to make it a little fancier and add a condition. Um, I should probably refresh only if the original data flow, uh, the first data flow completed successfully. And if it fails, why don't I send an email to me and Miguel 
uh, and then I can use metadata from the trigger of the data flow to construct the email. So uh, in the subject, I'll use the data flow name to let us know uh, which data flow failed. And then I can um, author the email with uh, the parameters that I have from the uh, data flow refresh, like the, again, the name, the start time of the refresh, the end time, uh, and uh, yeah, status uh, of the data flow refresh. Now, once uh, the data flow refresh uh, completes, this flow is going to trigger and uh, initiate the other data flow. Now, I can also use the Power BI connector to trigger a data set refresh and then basically orchestrate the transformation of data, uh, loading it into CDS, and then also refreshing a report and dashboard that's built on top of the data. So this uh, connector is going to be uh, coming soon. And that's my second demo. All right, so before we leave, I'd like to bring up the Power Query resources. Uh, you can find resources, sample code, documentation about Power Query Online and data flows in powerquery.com. The website uh, has links to the documentation and the M language reference. This is the language behind Power Query and also data flow documentation, how to articles, getting started, and additional details. Everything you need, you can start and discover in powerquery.com and also uh, in our forums in Power Apps or Power BI, where you can leave ideas or ask questions about data flows and Power Query. And with that, I'd like to end the presentation today by saying thank you and appreciate the time that you've taken to learn about Power Query and data flows. And we hope to see you in person next year.